There it is. Okay, the show has just started. We just, Yay. why do we, at, at the start of every single show, we're like, yeah, and then we both go at it. And it's like, a bunch of sound all at once. Because you're enthusiastic about our work. It's like, we scared you. Bah! Welcome to Mistress of Reads, the Jane Yellow Rock episode number six. We're Yay. talking about Skinwalker today. We're talking about Cross, Blood Cross. We're talking about Mercy Blade. We're talking about the Faith Hunter series that nobody seems to want to talk about on BookTube for the discussion <laughs> portion of our show today. <laughs> today, I have Boo back on the show. Boo, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Okay. And I had I, a moment today, but I'm good. <laughs> excellent. And I am Miss O or Mr. So, if you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> and then it depends on how much you're paying. Lord, I didn't think out the name of this show that well. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get this Kiki here because we're on Kiki. I don't know why we're on Kiki, but we're on Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> But let me get this. <laughs> let me get this Kiki. Within less than twenty four hours of getting Kiki and turning it the fuck on, look at the, the f bomb just dry. It came out of nowhere. Within like not even twenty four hours, we get getting this message on the Kiki. I'm like the Kiki is KK and then nasty. <laughs> but let me open it up and I will send you this message because this is just random. I had I had no I oh I already blocked him. Man, that was so gonna, fun. I, I already blocked him. Let me see if I can pull up the past message. I can't. I don't know how yet. Oh, it was so good too because it was random stuff. I, I turn on the thing, he sends me a message. He's like, Hey, how you doing? I'm like Oh, hello. Do I know you? Are you a listener? He's like, spank me. I'm like, what? <laughs> don't you want to, don't you want to warm me up? I, mean, <laughs> I said, I said to myself, well, maybe it's a joke. And so I was like, I, I did the logical thing. I said, well, um, yeah, I'm going to go. I got to go to sleep. I'll see you later. And you know, I just was like walking away. And he's like, may I rub your feet? I'm like, well, motherfucker. <laughs> maybe he's coming correct. maybe he's trying to come correct now and i was like you know i can play with this or i could go to sleep and i'm go like maybe sleep. i should just go to sleep and then you know the ding, i'm like mm, do i want to read this or do i want to block i can't help myself it's a train wreck we all know it's a train wreck <laughs> he's like he's like He's like, can you send me your soiled panties? I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> I almost type back, is that for free or for pay? <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I can go in the next room, rub a rub a egg on that, rub a boiled egg on that, make myself a profit. <laughs> I had a friend that that worked phone sex and it was so much fun because like she would get these calls in and and like uh she was like this little German woman and she was like mm -hmm. Chatsy, I need you to pour water in the toilet for me because this guy wants to hear me pee. And I'm like, what? She's like, I'm holding the phone. Just stand there, don't say anything, and just pour water in the toilet. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I had a bottle of water and I'm putting the water in the toilet. She's like, oh, oh, yes, Master Vince. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was, was great. She, question. Question. Was she peeing on him? He just wanted her to pee. He wanted to hear her pee. That was the whole get off. He wanted to hear it. We're getting real nasty this show. This is not the way to start off Jane Yellow Rock. We're going, we're deep in the weeds already. And it's just started, folks. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Mm. Mm. I, uh, and we're having all this conversation as I'm like revealing my vaporizer. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go ahead and get to we have only a tiny bit of nerdy, 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 nerdy kind of nerdy news. Um, I didn't rename the segment. I was just going off the weeds. <laughs> so we just got to get a like, if you didn't notice, um, JK Rowling has posted onto uh, Amazon the pre-orders and it, she's already sitting on faces. 
<laughs> just just get used to seeing her book pre-ordered as number one from now on till it comes out. Just, uh, just get used to you it. Know, I don't even know if I want to read this book. <sighs> A middle-aged Harry Potter. Like, yeah, I'm, but reading is he son's, I'm reading his son's books, but um, I don't know how I feel about reading this book. I kind of want to read Her Hermione's book, honestly. If this was Hermione's book, I'd want to read it. Hermione's book, I'd want to read. I'd even want to read Ron's. I wouldn't want to read Ron's because Ron is kind of stupid. I'm sorry. I'm not going to. Not... Well, it's more about his family. His family amuses the fuck out of me. Yeah, I'm on team Hermione here. <laughs> well, Ron's her hubby, so. Yeah, let's get some um, Hermione, Ron, Radica in the Hermione book, and let's move on. <laughs> well, I think I told you about the, the the Snape and Hermione fan fiction. That was I awesome. Actually, I actually think that would work as a relationship more than anything other else. I'm sure I could probably find it again if the author didn't take it down, but it was awesome because she was doming the hell out of him. I actually <laughs> think that, that as a as a because like. Hermione always had that intelligence level, and she was she, she could keep up with Snape in her sleep. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think she was actually even smarter than Snape, to be honest. So that that would have been really really interesting. Because Hermione, you know who what Hermione reminded me of Dumbledore. Yeah, and like yeah. her random, her random recall and random smarts level. Whole Dumbledore. It does kind of bother me though that like they didn't. There aren't more of them other than Neville working at the school. I think that I think that at some point Hermione and 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 Harry are going to come back to the school. I don't know about Ron. I don't know about Ron either. But like, wouldn't like Harry have been like the perfect idea for a dark arts professor since you know he lived it. <laughs> but the problem, the problem with Harry coming back to the school is that, and the problem with Harry and Ron coming back, Harry and Hermione coming back to the school, your kid wants to get in on this because she heard the Harry Potters, didn't she? <laughs> no, she's telling me that she's finished her homework. Oh, okay. The the reason why she, um, the reason why I think that it would work, it wouldn't work, is because it's hard to be at Hogwarts while you have a family, because Hogwarts is so cut off from like the normal world you have to go well you know what they never really explained how the other the other teachers got to work maybe they just came in by a flow. lot of them were a lot of them were single but yeah they could just come in by flow and they and the james potter books that's how harry comes and visits so often it's by flu mm -hmm. He, he doesn't have it. to be he doesn't have to be he doesn't have to be the headmaster of the of the, I don't know what they call them, um, the head teachers for the. He doesn't have to be the headmaster, but he could have been, you know, the professor of the dark arts. You know, Hermione could have been the one teaching history, you know. Yeah, but Ben's isn't going anywhere. He's not moving on. <laughs> no, but Harry keeps showing up at the fucking school because, you know, his kid is there and he's the head R. -er. But I, you know what? It, you know what could happen is they could have an, a weird fluctuation of uh, muggles becoming like a huge flux influx, so that would force them to get more teachers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a some weird influx of of muggles turning into uh, turning into wizards, and then that would force them to get more teachers, which would force them to. Um, hire more people and then Benz could you know she could take the place of Benz I'm making it work <laughs> well you won't be able to teach they, you already, they have an American muggle born in the James Potter series that is, is he's a pretty snazzy kid mm. okay so let's get off the Potters and get on to the Skinwalker <laughs> first book of the Yang Yellow Rock series yeah. So the Raven introduced me to this book. Yes, yeah, she is the Raven, like the Donald, but smarter, kind of. So um, the Raven introduced me to this series a few years the ago. The listener introduced, well, she, all right, she's a friend, and now she's sort of a listener. 
Yeah, she's a listener of this show and one of the panelists on on my other shows, Geeks and Great Oak Gamers and Geeks on Weird Shit. There we go. Anyway, so she uh she was like, You gotta read it, you gotta read it, because Raven is all about the shifters. Mm -hmm. And I read the first book and I was like, Ugh, ugh I hate this shit. And I and I walked away from the series. And and then and then Mistress O here was just like, no, you gotta read it. You have to. I love this series. You have to read it. And kids, because I, I told how it you, goes. I told you the first book was bad, but it gets better. And, and and I I actually ended up skipping the first book and reading the second and the third book. And now I'm on the fourth book. And much, much better. Though I got some beef, but we'll get to that beef. I would say this. I took some notes. I, I started rereading Tian Walker when you started reading it. And I went through and I took some notes. And I think that the what the redeeming what made me keep reading the first book in the skin the first book, Skinwalker in the Jane Yellow Ruck series, which starts off with Skinwalker, Blood Cross, first three years, Skinwalker, Blood Cross, and then Mercy Braid Blade was because I felt like that it had really good voice. Mm. The writing had good voice. And if it had good voice, it can do. But I think what it really failed at was building out that um, fantasy world. Had good voice, but it did a terrible job building out the fantasy world. It tried to, it tried to juggle so many things, and it was so intent it on getting like certain the, characters in place. It wasn't really a good story. It felt like she was treating beasts like an annoying pet. <laughs> No, yeah. so uh, we're not we're not gonna. There is no spoiler alert. You come correct for this one. I'm sorry, we're not doing it. We're not doing spoiler alert, non spoilery section. All we gotta say is, you know, understand this is a series. Get past that first book, and you're gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna be fine. That's all. Now we're in the non. We're in the spoilery time. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> spoilery time. So <laughs> I felt like I felt like. That that the author really made a mistake trying to pick push Ricky Bo so hard on. I Rita. can't fucking stand him. He's such a bitch, and he's an Omega now. Yeah, we're her little sphere. So we're in the in the first book. We're still in the first book. Let's just. And I felt like because she was pushing him so hard in the first book to be some sort of romantic y heartthrobby guy, that you know. It felt like, like she devoted too much attention to that part of the story, and not enough attention to the actual world where this chick it, lived. It felt so. like she was trying to write him, like he was just so sexy. He knew he was sexy, and she was trying to like give him some kind of arrogant swagger that didn't just quite reach it because he's still a bitch. Yeah, he's and, pretty and he's nice. a feisty bitch at that. You can't trust him. I don't. I don't. I don't dig him. I also don't think he's nowhere near as as strong as she is emotionally, mm -hmm. and and so that makes me like just yeah. I don't like that dude. I like Leo though. And I like Bruiser. On <laughs> fact of it, you know, the, the big twist is he's a, a cop, and then on fact, you know, the fact that he's a cop even pisses me off even more. You know, if they were going to push anyone, they should have pushed uh, uh, Derek, the former Marine. I can't say anything. I'm not saying anything, but but I I felt like I it was really hard for them to introduce that whole Derek subplot thing. Going it was in. it was difficult. It still is, but like Too many more characters. Than once, it was like you know her heart would skip a beat or her heart would suddenly thump when he's around. Though Beast would never comment on him. Like he he could at least have been a fun little tryst. Yeah, I, I I feel like it was going into a place where I didn't want it. It had too many characters to begin with. It had too many characters that they placed too much importance on. You can describe. I felt like you can describe a person's describe a character and just plot their name in there and then explore it. The next book, that's okay. But yeah. because they plopped so many, it was so character heavy. It got world light. Is that make any sense? It, yeah. So character heavy, it got world light. And I would have rather they made the Kate Daniels mistake. Can we have a show where we don't bring out Kate Daniels? That's never going to happen. <laughs> I would rather they make the Kate Daniels mistake and um, 
We might have, have to arrange one day to just have an interview with the Gordons just to get it out of our system. Oh my god, I, I need them to make books. Honestly, I don't want to take up their time. I need them to slave out some books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep it 100 right now. I need them to slave out books. So, get on it, bitch. I need them to... <laughs> you know, um, but what i would rather have them because what they what they really accomplished in the kate daniels series was i knew that it was an okay female lead an interesting possible love interest but more importantly it was a dynamic world and we never got that dynamic world in skinwalker no it, it almost the world itself didn't really make any sense and they tried but they it didn't it make was any just, sense. it just seemed just very big very loose I no. just wasn't the rules, the rules, even even the rules when it comes to what a vampire is or me Mithrin in the series wasn't really and then why are they called Mithrins? Mithrins? Like are, are they worshippers of Mithra? Like that was never really explained either. It gets it, they get into it later on in a book, but there's there's various different lore. It's all mixed up in there too, because they got Artemis up in there, and and <laughs> it, it's 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 a mixed lore of it's an alternate lore book, but it does have some basis in actual mythology. But at the same time, I need it when you when you're dealing with introducing your own version of something, if you're gonna make people glitter, explain it succinctly quickly and let's move on but she never really accomplished that in the first book which no. pissed, pissed me off and i think because me and you are veteran readers we expect a little more i don't think like a young reader would mind though a person we're, who hasn't read that many we're series. veteran readers and we're power readers at that so mm -hmm. it's like we like to get to the point and carry on yeah, I think I think if you a couple of times like a, a succinct one liner or something would have would have been really like a one liner or a couple lines of the way the mechanics of the world would have done a lot. What I really think this this book does, even in the first book, what it really does and it really accomplishes is I think it respects the Native American mythologies really well. I agree with that. From day one. And a lot of times you see in many of these series and they treat like these Native American tropes like, you know, dirt. Yeah. I felt like that she did her research. She talked to somebody and then she treated them with respect. And I also like the fact that, you know, it's a Native American, although she's Alaskan and that's kind of not the same, but, <laughs> okay. but she's a Native American on the cover, you know? Yeah. And it's it, and they didn't white her out and you know yeah. what i mean yeah that i think it the, her cover game it's on point yeah <laughs> you know i keep trying not to vape while we're doing this because i still haven't mastered the ability to vape and talk at the same time yeah no no i can carry it i can carry it <laughs> well no because if you suddenly hear me choking my brains out it's because it went through the wrong pipe <laughs> mm. Well, it's weird. As a smoker, I could take a drag and still talk with the smoke in my mouth. Vape, completely different story because it's denser than smoke because it's um. water vapor. And yeah, so I'm just warning y'all, I'm not dying. <laughs> I'm just vaping. <laughs> Sorry. No. Have a baby moment. I'm okay now. <laughs> I would say, I, I also want to, you know, one more thing for the first Skinwalker book and then we're just going to move on. I would say that, you know, the skinwalker character she's a very knowledgeable character about her own little job and stuff and yeah. I, and, and and she does strike the balance of being a knowing character and she's not afraid of tech yeah she's she's a knowing character she's not you know itty, she's not stupid on tech she knows just enough to get by it's believable she her martial arts is also believable and I think the the shining light in the story, even though it wasn't really executed properly in this one, is Beast. I I thought that when Beast took over, it was an interesting interaction. It was interesting, you know. I've got more mass, <laughs> you know, like a like a like a little kid, but like an adult at the same time, you know. I just felt that Beast could have been more prominent in the first book. And and because for for me it just comes off as Beast being like a petulant, annoying pet, and not like a distinct, different personality, 
or spirit from Jane Yellow Rock. I would say this. Beast has a weird sensuality. Uh, she has a brutal sensuality. <laughs> it's a weird sensuality. And I actually am highly attracted. I was like, woo, go Beast. Go Beast. I just, I don't know what it is, but I liked what I liked her. I liked her. I yeah, but I, I don't I don't I don't go for her her taste in men though. <laughs> her taste in men is pretty much anything with a dick. Like her her <laughs> Cause like you know her her, her whole thing with with Rick and Bo, oh god I wanted like kidney punch him I swear <laughs> we call him Ricky Bo and if you haven't read the series and made it all the way to what is it Blood Cross if yeah you made it to Blood Cross you won't know his nickname is Ricky Bo yet but is it Ricky you know which but, I automatically want to punch the guy because his name is Ricky just so yeah. <laughs> Ricky Bo <laughs> but but like yeah like he he fucking irritates me. And, and and Beast is all like, mm. but then like Beast will switch it up. She's like, well, well, what about what about Bruiser? Because yeah, she has, she, a, she's, she's it has a habit that I have where I give people nicknames mainly because I don't remember their actual name. Mm, I give them nicknames too. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, but it it works at least in my universe, and it works in hers too. So, yeah, um, I don't like Ricky Bo. I do like Bruiser. And uh, that that's pretty much it. Now, do you, do you enjoy what I what I really enjoyed? Just to close things out, is the conclusion to the story. I thought that was interesting in itself. The final moments was actually climactic, and it you know it was a solid ending. To spoil it, like the dude goes all weird and and bestiality, and you know. Meh! attacks her and you know it also sh foreshadows a lot of different things you know i like the way that the author foreshadowed possible outcomes for jane meaning she might become the bad guy she could just as easily become the bad guy exactly and that I was sophisticated like that there's a lot of odd little foreshadowing for possible mates for beast as well <laughs> We we're just into this beast love line I thing. Love, I love beast. Beast is the shiz. Beast, beast so beast gives zero fucks. <laughs> okay, let's go into Blood Cross now. Blood Cross, Blood Cross. is Blood Cross is the um, story. I have to pull up my I notes. Find it, like, I think it's kind of. I think Blood Cross is kind of hot, though it isn't traditionally hot. Blood Cross that, is like the redeeming light of the series. She came like, out to the forefront and she was just like, wow, bitches, give me some sex. So <laughs> in Blood Cross, you're dealing with a um, a vampire that had, uh, you know, she's again hired by the cancel council, even though she should have got the hell out of town if she was smart at the end of it. Because at the end of the last book, she killed the um, head council guy's son, even though yeah. he was technically eaten by the other dude, which is yeah. awesomely, wonderfully gruesome. Yeah. I think that's one of the one things I love. I love, you know, I love them gruesomes. I love them gruesomes. Now, now, like, I honestly could see a total thing where her and Leo, because of this book, and people are like, wait, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, he keeps trying to kill her. But that's the thing. It's the whole prey and predator play thing that they do, because they're both alphas in their own right. And it's kind of, it's kind of sexy. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of Leo, because he doesn't make any sense to me. I think you... <laughs> that's because he... Yeah, but Jane's nuts, he's nuts. I mean, it works. Yeah, and, and yeah. It doesn't work for Jane. I'm sure as fuck will work for Beast. Yeah, yeah, sure. But um, what I what I liked here is that you had a you, you're bringing in another element. So in the first <laughs> series, we meet the vampires, and we get a, a minor introduction introduction to the riches. And we get the uh, main protagonist as well working, you know, to solve the problem for the vampires. And the second one is vampire versus witches. Um, you also get, get a deeper understanding of blood slaves. Yeah, we get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Though there is still questions in the air about Leo and his blood slave, his main blood slave. You, you know, I, 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 I'm... Still, you know, I read the whole entire Steeler series, and I'm still wondering if, you know, him and Brutus, but <laughs> him and Brutus, like you know, even Jane was just like, the, you know, it, she she's like she she kisses that for like a moment for a thought. She's just like, 
you know, she she fulfill he fulfills his blood needs and and maybe his sexual needs too. But I don't want to think about that. I I kind of want to watch. <laughs> well, you know, well in the in the in the book that we'll be talking about soon, Beast has a suggestion for that. But anyway, let's continue with Whoa! this book. Woo! Woo! You know I'm down. <laughs> okay, so so um, Molly comes down, which is her best friend from um, I think it's like Ashland. They're in, they're in uh, North Carolina. Yeah, they're Asheville. In the, yeah, in, in in the Appalachian Mountains, and yeah. she and Molly brings her her two kids, very powerful little baby boy warlock, and a very 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 powerful little baby girl witch. She's successful. Trying, they're trying to suppress her powers, but that shit seeps out. And, and hide it from the government. I think they do a yeah. really good job of succinctly explaining, since we still don't understand fucking vampires. They treat but she does like they're Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. They, they, she, she does a really good job of succinctly summarizing what the rules for witches are in this world. And, yeah. and we kind of get the introductions to the way witch power works on the different levels witch power works, you know, earth, moon, uh, darkness, da da da, all the different ways earth power actually works in this, you know, earth um, and witch power works. And I think that that, that was done actually correctly. We you also get the Captain Planet for a second. Yeah. We, we also get the hints of um, how government views the witches too. Yeah. As tools for the government, I I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, I, 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 maybe it's the X Men and me. I don't know. And but, then uh, also like Molly's husband's like distinct hate for Jane, which there's there has to be more backstory to that. And there is because and I just haven't read it yet. There is there's a short story, but um, he's a super alpha, and he always feels that you know he doesn't want his wife in danger. You know. I, I get that, but for him to come to that sensation, that's what makes me wonder, like, what happened before this that caused him, like, not to. In 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 um in uh, I think it is uh, Jane Yellow Rock uh, zero point three short story snafu. Uh, what happened was Jane uh, and they talk about it in the first book, sort of, kind of. Um, Jane took Molly into a vampire den. And then they fought their way in and then they fought their way out to kill all the vampires. And he didn't like that. He doesn't want uh, his wife doing that kind of stuff because it's, it's really dangerous. And Jane herself almost died. She almost got her head cut off in half. And yeah. that's where the whole video of Jane walking out, you know, got put on YouTube, you know, with a huge freaking Which they mentioned, they mentioned that again oh, in, in a book for in, uh, Raven's Curse, Raven Cursed, which I'm reading right now. Okay. But the thing about Blood Cross that I really, 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 really like was that G Beast came to the forefront as you're talking about, but more more interesting enough is this is the that weird sensuality of, of her. It, it's really like born in this book. It's like I finally feel like the author understood who Beast was in relation to Jane. Like I have this weird way of of perceiving like good sensual matches in books. If it's a good match, in my head, the the best way for me to describe them is uh, is tasting something. I always and I <laughs> it's always taste with me. Mm -hmm. And with with her and and Ricky Bo, well, yeah, fucking Ricky Bo. I don't like him. That, but with her and Bruiser, it, it's kind of like like Burt Carmel, and, yeah. and I kind of like, I kind of want it to go further, but then part of me doesn't because I can, it doesn't seem right. Well, there's he a, is a blood has, slave, so he has he divided has, loyalty. Exactly. Well, there's not divided loyalty. His loyalty is to his master, so he will never have her loyalty unless it benefits his master. Well, yeah. he will. He will never be loyal to her unless it benefits his master. So that's another problem too. Isn't this the first book that? No, no, not this book. Not this book. Never mind. Go ahead. Do your thing. But I just, I just feel that they they need to bring in more. We need more. Give me, give, bring me more options. More. Let's make. <laughs> let's, 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 
Let's turn it into more of a reverse harem. Bring in more options. It's raining men. Okay, it's raining <laughs> men. All right. If you want it to rain men, you know, whatever. Speaking, you know, I, I, the, I also thought, well, you know what I thought was interesting? The whole idea of that cross itself. And they explained the lore behind the cross in this one as well, which is that weird mixed, uh, mixed lore. But the fact that, you know, witches can become vampires and therefore the vampires take longer to cure and you they know, may never though, cure. I kind of wish that they took the, the lore in a different direction and not really the blood cross, but, but maybe like a, a slither of steel from the uh or iron from the the nail of the actual true cross i, I will explain this though because this is this gonna sound creepy not creepy but weird so old folklore i don't know if you've ever heard this story before with uh why 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 the why the romani are forced to roam the earth mm -hmm. on the day of, of christ's crucifixion the soldiers came to them to to make nails to crucify Christ and the gypsy used the cheapest materials he could to make the nails and as punishment they're forced to wander the earth mm -hmm. well vampires are forced to wander the are forced to wander the earth for you know eons and forced to drink human blood why not make that part of their like ultimate like a parable to like their ultimate like punishment well, you eventually learn their backstory, which is probably, it's actually more interesting than, 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 it's actually a lot more interesting. The what she does with the actual vampire backstory, which I wish you would have told earlier in the series, is pretty interesting unto itself. Yeah, because I'm on book four, and I still don't notice yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like she does a disservice to the reader by not wrapping up what the fuck we're dealing with, with the oh, vampires. Maybe she wasn't sure about it yet until yeah. later. But the thing about it is, with the witches, she is. And that really... That well, she has another series uh, called, uh, what was it, Rogue Mage or something like that, where it's it's a it's a waspy version of Jane Yellow Rock, but she's hunting down rogue mages. I didn't even read that one. I haven't read it yet either, but I have it on my hard drive. I, I, I have I the e -books. read it. I might read it. Okay, but let's go on to the next book. Um, for the conclusion, um, we get the early use of the baby's power, which she shouldn't be using, and she does anyways, which is her um, a goddaughter. Uh, and a very pissed off Evan. And But she gets the children back. And that's what they do in the Blood Cross. Okay, so let's head over to Mercy Blade. Mercy Blade is the beginning of anything, everything. I kind of feel like she should have started the series about here. I no, yeah. like Mercy Blade a lot. Um, wait, uh, what part? Are we on the review part or are we on the the spoil part? <laughs> we're 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 in, we're deep in the spoils. We just said fuck it. We're spoiling it. Fuck it. I I was so the only thing that disappointed me about this book was that Ricky Bo lived. <laughs> I was so hoping that they would find him dead. It is the first time I read a book before where I wanted, like, one of the good guys to die because he just hit me off. A that cop one. at that. A cop at that, too. So in this one, we have... Um, a bad cop because he got... They, like, figured out he was, like, a, a fucking undercover, like, quick as hell. So he in, was like, already, the first book, yeah. He was, like, already a bad cop. So, yeah, fuck that. Okay, so in this one, um, her she's sort of fixing things with her employer, kind of, and a pack of werewolves to send out. Out, uh, we have the introduction of the first shifters in this one who come out of hiding finally after years and years of them being in hiding. Who knows? You know, that yeah, that makes sense. Mean, well, you meet Eva, well, Evangeline in the in the last book in Blood Cross, but Correct. you meet her in this. You get to know her more in this one, and I have to admit, like. Jane grudgingly like likes her, but I, I don't like this bitch. And and I, I well one because because I I feel the same way that Beast feels. Why are you encroaching on a bruiser? Trifling the hell. And then on top of that, like she's trying to spell everybody. What's her agenda? 
And yeah, is I, she gonna end up dead in one of these future books? Because if she kept pulling that shit on me, I would let Beast loose on her ass and it'd be free special meat. I never like kind of fey magic, and that's the reason that kind of feyish, that kind of like forced uh enchantment, like passively forced enchantment crap. I never liked it. Because it, it it's almost like rape, because you never yeah. get the option. You're not giving somebody the option. Of, of liking you or disliking you or loving you or not loving you. You're forcing your will onto them, which is a form of rape. So, yeah. you know, it's not cool. And I don't even think, I, I think that Mercy, I think in Mercy Blade, uh, uh, Jane says that it's actually illegal magic, correct? It is, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, again, she's doing illegal magic. Nobody's saying shit. <laughs> no, so, I mean... Yeah, so witch council must suck ass because nobody's saying anything about it. And, and um, in Mercy Blade, we do we get to meet you know we get to meet new shifters. Yeah, um, new shifters. Uh, Kami Kamimbi. Yeah, I actually Kem said it right. Kamimbi. 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 Yes. Kamimbi. 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 Actually, I said Kan. Kamimbi. I was having trouble with Ken more than Nebby. <laughs> uh, I should tell you Ken, something. Ken, Ken, Ken. Ken, Ken, Nebby. Um, He's an asshole. <laughs> but kind of sexy in a weird way, right? Kind of. But Until he starts, like, PMSing. Yeah. Like, that's a whole thing. Like, his... I don't know. He kind of reminds me of like one of those like weird ass gurus who are like all about having all the answers in the world until like somebody steals his weed stash and then like he loses his shit. Like that's what he reminds me of. Yeah. I think the the it's it the little um gremlin or whatever they what do they call them? Uh Grindylo? Yeah, Grindy. The, the little Grindylo, uh the Grindy. That's an interesting concept too. They I kind of remind me of Kappas, the Japanese Kappas. Yeah, I, 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 I would. It's interesting that they have a sentient, sentient race who enforces the law. That's an interesting concept. Now there is a little clutter, lore clutter in this book, though, because mm -hmm. you have you have African lore, you have Celtic lore, you have the Native American lore, you have you have. Um, the the vampire lore which spans like all of Europe, and then you have like so you have like all these like little things are just clashing together in, in such a way, and, and then the one thing that we're not sure if it's Celtic or angelic. I <laughs> would say that that the African lore. I I wouldn't call what she's doing with the African lore actual African lore. I, I would say it's more like applying. European lore onto Africa. African lore. That's fair to say. It's just it just seems like a bit of a clutter. And mm -hmm. it could have been, I understand, you know, wanting to use different creatures that you're not gonna see commonly in other books. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like some of them, like the Grundy itself was so poorly explained mm -hmm. that it, it kind of just caused a lot of they explained it in the next book. They explained yeah. it in the next book. But I wish I wish when she does these things that as an author, she would have a more exact, succinct idea of what she wants to do with it in the first place. She so she did a kappa. Yeah, instead, <laughs> instead of like having a second book where she executes it correctly. I kinda I kinda wish she would execute it correctly in the first place. Maybe which is my problem with the Mithrans books. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, which is my oh, well, I don't mind it, but it's my problem with the whole vampires is because we still we have still yet to get the actual vampire backstory yet. We're in book three. Yeah, we should have a backstory. She should be working on the main problem, beginning the steps for the main problem until you introduce be a new main problem, new possible future mates for Beast. <laughs> <laughs> You're just constantly trying to get it to rain men. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, Beast has needs that need to be fulfilled, and Jade is failing at that. <laughs> Seriously, though, right? Um, Ricky she, Bow was not going to scratch that it's the right way. I think Bruiser would have, or Leo. What I like, though, in this thing is I like her wardrobe, that collar thing. Ooh. Oh, the mesh collar? Yeah. You know, I actually <laughs> dated this dude for a brief time that worked a lot making, like, chainmail like shirts and stuff like that for Renfair. 
And uh, he actually made me this really cool ass like like mail chain mail necklace. Unfortunately, though, in reality, chain mail is heavy, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is quite heavy, That's and it leaves really unattractive little indents in, on your skin. Oh, uh, you won't be able to see mine. I'm gonna get that chain mail thing. It's an awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome. Ex you know, I got the boost yet. I just need the chain hell necklace. I'll be ready to be Jane Real Rock. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that overall, though, I don't think it becomes a story until the second book, at the very least. And I and then what I I feel like I feel like when the first three books, I'm reading a really long outline. Now, what I do like is that they do show more of her personal interests. In, in this book, like she flushes out to, you show, you have Beast more out more, but you also show more of her human side. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot more of her like favorite things, like how she is a gun enthusiast to the point that it's like making love. And she's a motorcycle enthusiast to the point that it's like making love. Yeah. You know. The teas instead of the coffees and the, yeah. Yeah, the teas. Yeah, the the whole southern sensibility of when it comes to children, you get in the first two, in in, in the second book, and the third, and the third book, when it comes to children, or and the children and the way people talk to her, she likes to. You get that, you know, you get that she likes to be spoken to in a certain particular way. If you don't accomplish that, she'll come for you. Yeah, I like that. It's assertive. Jane's alpha. Yeah, I like that. I like that she's an alpha. Like, you know yeah. I me, mean, we go through this all the time. I yeah. love books where the female lead is an alpha. I'm tired of beta bitch damsels in their chest. Oh my goodness, save me. Fuck mm -hmm. that. I want my, my, my heroine to pull out the big ass gun or the big ass knife or the big ass sword and be like, let's do this. Okay, well then how can you explain your love for, for freaking, freaking uh, October day? Honestly, because October Day does get it done. She doesn't. She gets yelled at constantly for doing shit she's not supposed to do. That almost kills her. Because even if she knows that she's gonna fail, she's still gonna fucking try to do it anyway. Yeah, but she has these weird moments. In like I might die, but you know what? Let's get it done. <laughs> yeah, well, better go out on top. So, in conclusion, we have three books for you. We did them all. We discussed them. We hashed them. We sat on faces. <laughs> Red wine. Yeah. I'm just glad that we made the episode six. And I'm going to say it because I already said it earlier. Six for sex. <laughs> I really, really actual look at this. Yeah. Oh, oh um, she had sex with Ricky Bo. I hate Ricky Bo. We didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about the sex with Ricky Bo. Because it was stupid. It, <laughs> it wasn't high. It wasn't sexy. It, was it wasn't a, It, it was an afterthought. It, it was, was like it was there. And it, it was, was like, like, oh my God, I have a boyfriend. Oh my God. It was like, was like bitch, what is wrong with you? It's like an afterthought. <laughs> I like wanted her to go stab something right after she said, oh my God, can you believe I have a boyfriend? It was like, yeah, was like, go, go stab something, please. Yeah, you're starting to like not look cool in my eyes. <laughs> and then, it, and then the next page, she stabbed something, and I felt better. <laughs> yeah, we didn't talk about that. Um, I, I because I, Kibo is an afterthought. He should have died at the end of book three. <laughs> this is a whole STDs. <laughs> and and now he's a he's a fucking he's a fucking wear panther, shape sister STDs. <laughs> Fucking oh. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is, it is, it is, it is, you know, the whole the whole shapeshifter getting it. He basically got an STD. Yeah. Poetic. And she's like mad at herself that this happened to him because she couldn't recognize that he was in trouble. I, I don't know. I think that you know, I would have reacted the same way, I'd be like, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, but weren't they together? Yeah, they were a couple, but you know, she was supposed to meet him for breakfast, but he showed up with some redhead chick instead before she showed up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah but he like, was he was having sex with that chick before then, though. See, you know what? They keep saying that it was after then, not unless they started the change on him before. Like he got his first bite before that day. 
Mm. But she would have already seen it because didn't she see him that morning? Yeah, but they did. But she he got the initial problem when he kissed that chick, correct? I thought it was. Uh, I don't know. That's how he got the cat DNA. He was kissing that chick. It's just so nasty. Yes, it he is. He is just he's he's a walking pile of gotta suffer her to clap. Another question though. Do these motherfuckers not believe in condoms? Like <laughs> in, in, in this in this series though? Because the main the main way that she pinpointed that, that Kid Navi had any attachment with that chick is because she smelled his cum on her. <laughs> Like, I don't care if it's urban fantasy. Condoms are real. Ask Kate Daniels. You know what, though? Kate stopped using condoms. Did you notice that? Well, that's because she found her, her mate. Yeah, well, she you know, but knocked up pretty soon. <laughs> Keep that up. I, All right. Go ahead. But yeah, disease still, still you know, exists in fantasy worlds. <laughs> Use condoms. Condoms. I was I was about to say the condoms are real life as well. Yes, I I've said that to you before. Condoms are real, y'all. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I I I can't believe he got freaking shapeshifter STDs, and yet she still not <laughs> use condoms in the series. Oh my god! Why didn't they kill him I, off? I, there is nothing I, special I, about him. STD, and you still have your main character. Flying around without even a fucking freaking condom or something, and it was it was like I think he like had sex with like more than one female wolf at that. On top, well, of like after that after was like rape, that was like rape. I don't know. I don't know. That was rape. He, kept, he said to her, he he didn't say you know it, I was violated. He didn't say they they forced themselves on me. He said I cheated on you. I know I cheated on you. I knew I cheated on you the day after blah 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 blah. I knew that I cheated on you. Yeah, but he he did the rape. He, they stole him, tied him up, took him a place and raped the fuck out of him. Hey, some guys, that's a good Friday night. Yeah, but I don't think he was he down was, for that. He was already bitten by the cat before he became before he was uh before he was taken by the wolves. Yeah, that I do know about. Like he actually had sex with the wolves consensually because after he was bitten by the cat and he was transforming, Jane even explains that he was going to crave some kind of sexual contact anyway. Mm. So he was already prime. He he was already DTF. Yeah. Well, I mean, he shouldn't he, you know the problem with him is his undercover work was basically sluttery. Yeah, that was his idea of being undercover. I mean, he didn't have any other game plan. I mean, as soon as you got into a relationship with a woman, all, and all probably, had, let's just have sex. Yeah, you should have probably, you know, as soon as she got in a relationship, a, a, a somewhat, you know, they seem to be in some type of long term relationship since he helped her out over, you know, he drove with her to her house and stuff, which is basically meeting her family, you know, mm -hmm. pretty much. As soon as he knew that they were in that type of relationship, he should have went to his you know commanding officer and basically said i can't do my slut moves on duty anymore i you know i need to be reassigned because what he did instead was he kept on being undercover and then on top of it kept doing the slut shit yep you know that that's like and i have no i have no i have no sympathy for ricky bow i am i uh, i'm hoping they're gonna kill him off eventually if you if you you saw my 2013 post, I Instagram, saw it. It was and, where, I, where I am just ripping into her character because I just couldn't stand it. In my heart of hearts, I wanted to stab people. <laughs> I just I was so angry. I oh it was great. It was so great. It was, it was I hate Ricky. <laughs> I hate him. I hate that was like him. the first line of it. I hate Ricky. I I I don't see it was great. <laughs> I hate him so much. I truly, he's truly a vile character. Because you know the worst part is he doesn't know he's a vile character. You know, most people know they're an asshole. Yep. He didn't realize he was an asshole. It's like he's an asshole. It's obvious. Let's move on. <laughs> but ah, oh, can't stand him. So 
I think that is everything for the show today. Yes. I actually, I think I might've come up with the tagline. Books are not just for displaying people read like you give a fuck. Yeah. I would like, I don't expect everybody to read the, the way we read. Like my, my reading habits are even worse because I read so much and I keep trying to keep up with my good reads and, and posting out what I've read or in the middle of reading and I fail. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading, <laughs> I was, I'm reading another review about Blood Cross that you liked. <laughs> oh, is it another hateful one? Oh, that was one of my favorites, though. <laughs> but you know, I don't think everyone to be a power reader. Like, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to whine and cry over books you haven't had a chance to read yet. I have lists. Go go look at my Goodreads. There's a shit ton of books that either A, I haven't read yet, or B, I read and I just haven't gotten around to remember to point out that I read it on Goodreads. Mm -hmm. And then there's that whole problem of remembering when I finish the book. <laughs> or actually, I hate when I double read. Oh, I do that a lot, too. But... But yeah, <laughs> so you didn't leave a you didn't leave a comment for uh for this particular book, but there oh where where is that fun little comment that I liked because it was a great it was great oh it's on it's on um it's uh it's it's a hot mess hold on I know exactly where it is it's on the um blue book it's on the Mercy Blade one yeah and it was the point where I realized that Ricky Blow basically had just caught STDs. He got, he got his nasty ass cut off TVs. Yeah. I found it. I found it. I found it. Wait, let me let the page load. Okay. <laughs> it's so great. Like, I don't even comment on, on, on Gert Reads that often. And, but here it is. I hate Rick. He's annoying. This crap is so annoying because no one man is, <laughs> is, is worthwhile now that Ricky has a shapeshifter <laughs> STD. <laughs> and I had to like it because <laughs> I did like the book, but I had to like her comment because it was awesome. A response: I put I hate Rick too, but I do like the other option. So I guess my like is because of all the hate in this comment is hilarious. <laughs> Can't stand them. <him. laughs> <laughs> Let's, like there's this chick on on Goodreads named Terry, aka Miss Christian Gray. I, I think she became that. she became like a blogger or something at some point. When I, we we you know we read we read a lot of books, and I, I I like comment to her every now and then. But she actually does that double. You know, she sits in two different genres, which is erotica, erotica romance, romance contemporary, urban fantasy. Some BDSM. So she's like our type of reader. And she has like this, she has this comment here where it's like, this series has taken a, a Kim Harrison turn for the worse. I can see now why Kim's quotes are on the cover of this book. <laughs> That's not a good thing. I'll explain more in my blog, which her blog is uh, my book boyfriend blog. Blackspot.com. But <laughs> I love it though. This this is for, it's for blood cross. Cover, yuck, rating, R, thumbs up, four. Overall, interesting. Characters, well written. The plot, the enemy in disguise. Page turner, yes. Series continue, yes. Recommend, yes. Book boyfriend, Rick. <laughs> and, but, but, yeah, I was just like, cover, yuck, yeah, you know, I agree with that though. No, I like the cover. I don't like the cover. Too many, too many mixed symbolisms. Well, I don't like how she puts that weird bar on the left side of all her colors. That's the only thing I don't like about it. I, I don't get that one either. Not unless it's their own like word, like version of like framing or some shit. I think it's. I think it's so that when you are, you know how books have the spines. I think it's so when you have the spines, it's all different spines. It's all different color spine things, and you have a distinct, you know, you know that the spine has a frilly thingy to it. Yeah. Uh. I, I listen. I know YouTubers like that. <laughs> you do that thing, like the YouTube, and I got nothing against them. I understand the neuroses. I get it, but you know, let's keep all things in in proportion here. Um, but <laughs> I just. 
I don't know. It looks like her Dreamcast was uh Byron's uh my when my my co-host from other podcasts his uh his man crush uh the dude from uh white collar what is his name that I never remember <clears throat> that was her idea for Christian Grey too I agree with that though he would have made a much hotter Christian Grey but there's that whole problem of like you know him being gay and then people didn't want that and that was just no fun Since well I wish he was taller. This when did sexuality have anything to do with smut? <laughs> sure doesn't. If they're gay, that's just a twofer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and close it out today. Thank you yes, so much for coming. Out. Remember, read like you give a fuck. Please and we will, we'll see you. Drop the shoes. Drop them heels. Drop them Nikes. <laughs> <laughs> drop the Jordans. The Adidas. Jordans. Nice. <laughs>